Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ami Bernice. I make videos about videos. <laughs> freelancing and other things digital marketing so if you're new here in my channel and you haven't subscribed yet please do i make videos every wednesday i don't make them every wednesday but i publish them every wednesday and you get what i mean so today we will be talking about how you can make your very first video as a beginner a lot of people have been asking me as to how to do this exactly because it seems like a very daunting task to put on the camera and like do your own thing like what i'm doing right now also, ladies and gentlemen, it has to be a part of you in a sense that when you are creating videos, you will be doing this for the next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And so you have to really be dedicated on this one. But how can you be dedicated on something if you don't know how to start it? I got you covered, ladies and gentlemen. I remember very well the first time that I recorded videos, I was having this motion background thing behind me I was using a green screen because all I have in my apartment that I cannot pay is a white wall and you know me if you have seen a couple of my videos about videos I do not like white walls because it looks like you are creating an ID photo having a passport photo taken it's like a mugshot all these things no no in creating videos so this video has four parts the first one would be your limiting beliefs in creating a video. Next one is beginner's equipment. The third one is camera framing and positioning. And the fourth one is what should you talk about in the videos that you will be creating. So let's dive right into the very first one, which is your limiting beliefs when creating a video. So tell me, what exactly is your goal when you are making a video? Is it to impress other people? Is it to sell? Is it to market a brand? Because if it's to market a brand and sell something, you don't really need to worry about anything because what you're doing is legal, it's ethical, you're only marketing yourself, you're only pushing your brand out there by creating videos totally fine. But if you are creating videos in order to impress other people, then I would say that you should really be ashamed of yourself right now. Turn off the, the camera thing. Stop creating videos because that doesn't really matter in the real world. I myself have been doing things for other people for a very long time and it was just when I got sick that I was able to realize that at the end of the day, all these people, they don't really matter. We are here to be serving other people in one way, shape or form. And that's either you sell something to other people, you give value to other people's lives. That's what we're here for. And so if you have limiting beliefs as to like, I look stupid in this video, I have to stop making videos. People have been telling me that my teeth is fake. It's not straight. So I should stop making videos. And if you're you're going to hear how I'm speaking and saying that very line. It looks as though it's so immature, but that's exactly what you're thinking right now, aren't you? You're thinking about, oh, I don't really look good. I speak weird. I sound weird. I don't like it. I'm probably not going to be making videos at all ever again in my entire life because all these things matter so much to me and it matters so much. These people saying things things like this, it bothers me and all that kind of stuff. And if you're just going to hear that, the, the things that I said, if you're going to play it back, it's so immature and it's so selfish in a sense because we are made for each other in this universe and you are either to entertain and educate. Secondly, speaking of entertain and educate, those are the top two reasons why you should be creating videos. Nothing more, nothing less. That would also beg the question, hey Demi, I want to be creating videos and I want to educate people, but what if I am not an expert yet? Catch me if you can, movie. I don't know if I've mentioned this in my previous videos before, but Frank Abagnale was pretending to be a professor and he was only 17. And at the end of his fiasco, at the end of this con stint that he was doing, he was asked, hey Frank, you were only 17. How are you able to pull through becoming or pretending to become a college professor?
professor in a really prestigious university, and like you haven't even finished college yet. And he only said that I only need to be one chapter ahead of the students that I was teaching. No one will ever question it. And that's exactly the same thing that you can do. I would say that I may have a lot of experience on videos compared to you, and that's exactly what I'm teaching you. And I'm not like the best. I don't have the perfect lighting at all times. I don't think that my videos are perfect, but at the same time, I have something a little bit more advanced in terms of knowledge than you that I can share to you so that you can start creating your own videos, right? So that's exactly what I'm talking about here. When you are trying to educate people, you are not really required to be an expert or a master at it. You just really need to continuously learn and study so that there is something that you can report to your audience when you are to record next. And when it comes to entertainment, a lot of people would say that I'm not funny enough. I'm not saying that you have to be a comedian in order to like entertain people. That's not the point. When you are entertaining someone, you don't need to make them laugh. You just need to find something that is fun and enjoyable that you can share to people in your videos and that would take up their time and that would keep them from getting bored. That's exactly what entertainment is about, okay? So that's basically it. So what is your limiting belief about you creating videos? Is it because you don't like to look stupid? I don't even have a word to tell you exactly how many times was I able to make an expression and then someone just commented on the YouTube comments and say that, hey, you made this expression, I'm not going to watch you anymore. And I discussed this in my previous videos where I was saying that your expression could come as offensive to other people because they have past experiences and traumas you never know about. And so whatever you do, even if you just raise your hands like that, even if you just do this, like it's offensive. Like what I'm wearing right now, I don't have sleeves. This is probably offensive to other people as well, but I don't really care because I look good in it, so I'm gonna keep on wearing it. So at the end of the day, as long as you are entertaining or educating people, you're good to go. Drop it completely, all your limiting beliefs. Let's go to the second part of this video, which is the beginner's equipment. A lot of people have been asking me what camera I'm using, like all these things. My camera, guys, is an advanced technology question mark. It's more of like something that I really pushed myself to buy even if I wasn't comfortable spending this much of this this much of a money on a camera equipment because I really wanted videos to be my career. But when you are starting out, we're talking about how to film your very first video, right? You don't need fancy cameras. All you need to have is smartphone. Better yet, if you have an iPhone, you're solved. The camera technology of an iPhone is a lot better. You know, I'm so sorry Android users, forgive me. Ah, I'm probably biased because I'm an Apple fangirl. A lot of the technologies that there is in an iPhone is actually good when it comes to like to camera or all these things, right? Even if you don't have an iPhone, please don't make it an excuse like, hey, oh, I don't have an iPhone. I should probably not record video. Dude, stop making excuses. Whatever mobile device that you have right there, as long as it has a camera, as long as it has 1080p at least, okay? Majority of the cameras, I would say like 95% of the cameras and the smartphones that we have already have 1080p and that's exactly what you need in order to begin recording videos, okay? So that's the resolution that you need in order to create videos. So you are solved just by having a smartphone, okay? You don't really need a high quality video camera right now. Second, part of the equipment is the audio. A lot of people can sit through long videos even if the video is awful as long as the audio is good. And I'm not kidding you. A lot of times I just don't look at videos. I just keep them playing on the TV or on my laptop as long as the audio is really good, but no one can sit through horrible audio. Immediately they would like close the Chrome tab or whatever. They usually just close it if the audio is horrible. So you have to stop using the audio of your phone. You have to buy some sort of lapel or a lav mic. The one that I'm using right now is Rode Mic. 
my go. I also have a video talking about video gear from all budgets. So I have a video. I will link that in the description also if you want to check that out. But I have been recommending a lot of lav mics that are affordable. You can buy them online in Lazada, Shopee, or Amazon, wherever you are in the world. And you can make use of that because again, the microphone or the audio is much, much more important than the video itself. So that's all that you need to have. Another video equipment that I want to discuss is lighting. And a lot of people would buy like their ring light to start, but I don't really like ring lights. Ugh. It's the Korean-ish. <laughs> I just don't totally get it. Like why does it have to be a circle? That's just it for me. I mean, if you do not have a ring light, I'm going to show you what I'm using right now. So I'm using this. This is a very cheap light. This is an underwear light that I just purchased online. And that's also included in the video that I made, the video gear video, video gear video. Mm. <laughs> so I included that there also. I mentioned about underwear lights and that's exactly what I'm using. It's a very small panel. It's portable. You can use it anywhere. You don't need a really large space in your mini studio to even have it. So that's all I have. And if you really don't have lights at all, what you can use is ding, 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 your window. Yeah, I know. A lot of people don't use their windows because I don't know, for some reason. When I was a kid, when I was 14 and I've loved selfies back in that time, you know, when selfies were a thing and like you upload it on Facebook, like 100 pieces of like the same selfie were just like different variations of your duck face. Mm. That's when I started using the window light. And I kid you not, it's the best source of light that is out there when you do not have any sort of lighting. Like if you're having troubles with light or whatever, just go near a window and that's basically it, girl. That's all you have to do is just open your window, put your camera near the window, sit there, record a video. The only thing that I don't like about window light or the daylight basically as a source of light is that when it's already at 4 p.m., 5 p.m. or 6, when the sun starts to go down, that's when it starts to get dark and then the light is going to fluctuate and then your editor will be like, um, miss, <laughs> your video is actually not consistent in terms of lighting. It's going to be hard for a video editor because they color grade videos. They filter it out to make it look like a certain way. And then at like 0.3 minutes and 10 seconds, it's a different shade of light again. And then they have to color grade it again the same way they did in the first two minutes. So that's a trouble for a lot of video editors. It's also going to be a trouble for you when you start to understand these video editing tactics and techniques. But as of this moment, your audience will barely notice it, especially if you are talking about something really good. They don't really notice that at all, but I'm just telling you lights are much, much more important than, you know, a digital camera. So it's always an audio and a light. Okay, let's talk about camera placement and framing. The very first one that I always talk about is please do not ever film behind or near a white blank wall. I cannot even stress it enough, but like, why are you there? Are you having an ID photo, a passport photo, a mugshot? I just don't understand it. I never knew about that as well. So now that you're watching this video, you now have a knowledge for that. Congratulations, don't do it, okay? <laughs> it just doesn't create any sort of depth. I mentioned this in my previous videos. It looks like you popped out from that wall and it's funny, it's weird, just don't do it. It's not aesthetically pleasing, okay? And then the second one is when it comes to camera framing, you can either use the rule of thirds, which I don't use at all, by the way. So the rule of thirds is that there are nine squares in this specific frame and that you have to be, as a subject of the video, you have to be 
in one of those intersections on those nine boxes or nine squares. And that's very easy for you to understand, right? And a lot of cameras actually have grids like that, that follows the rule of thirds. I don't personally use them. I just keep myself in the center of the camera, which is fine because, you know, if you sit like this following the rule of thirds, that's a little bit weird also because like, what is this? Why is this like a negative space? Some people do that. I don't really understand it, but also what you could do is just use the geometrical shapes that is in your background. Like for example, the one that I'm using right, right now is that there's a white line behind me and that would emphasize me as the subject of the video. That's why I'm sitting right here, okay? So you can use the geometrical shapes on your background to create more depth and that it's not boring. There's a space there, there's dimensions. You're living on earth, basically. That's what you're trying to say psychologically to the person who is watching the video, okay? That's proper framing. Also, when it comes to videos, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you have at least three inches in the top of the frame. Sometimes I forget this. Proper framing is that there should be one to three inches above your head before the frame cuts off and that the bottommost part of the frame should be in your breast area if you have any breast because like I don't. Sorry. So <laughs> <coughs> So the last part of your frame or the bottom part of your frame should be like here in this area, not your neck, right? So don't do like a video like this where you're in, like you're in front of the camera and there's no inches here above and the last part of your frame is your chin. Don't do that. A lot of people do that also. So it's like you are talking to a friend. Psychologically, when the person is looking at your video, it looks like you are having a conversation because there's space at the top and the last part of your frame is you're here. And that is exactly what you see in your own eyes when when you are talking to a person right across a table or something. So you are just simply following what your eyes are already used to, right? It's much more comfortable for your audience eyes when they see you using that kind of frame instead of like being like this. It's like, yo, yo I'm, I'm in your, your face right, right now. now. And like, like it's, it's so, so stiff and so tight. And, tight and I'm like, like trying, trying to send, send you some more like information, information by speaking. speaking. And it's not making your audience comfortable. So when you are comfortable in your videos, it would also make your audience feel comfortable and light and that they can continuously watch your video. The last one when it comes to camera framing and placement is that the camera lens should be an eye level of you as the subject. So when you are placing a camera, it has to be like eye level, not above, not below. Make sure the lens is like in a straight line with your eyes. It just makes the uh, person watching your video a little bit more comfortable and it looks like they are talking to a friend. That's it for camera placement and framing. And the last part is what to talk about in your videos. I know we are unwrapping so much in this video and it's a lot, but these are all the things that you will be needing when you are filming your very first video. So truth be told guys, I don't really script my videos. I have a script for this, but I'm not following it. <laughs> I'm just looking at the outline to see what I'm supposed to be talking about next, but I tried to script things and it never works out for me. I don't know why. I'm really good at scripting things and memorizing them and then speaking them, but also it makes me feel more comfortable if I don't script my videos. It makes me anxious when I have a script that I need to follow. I just pull ad libs here and there from my web space of knowledge and I try to speak it in front of the camera because having a word per word script really makes me feel like I'm restricted and I don't have a creative freedom. So there's that. When it comes to understanding and knowing what to talk about in your videos, I would say that the very first one is pick a topic that you will be talking about for the next two to five years. And I'm not saying this in order to restrict you and make you feel like you're chained 
into doing something, all that kind of stuff. This thing actually, when it comes to having a topic to talk about in videos or in podcasts or whatever form of content you are trying to create, it's more of like an ongoing thing. You will not figure it out and say one day or tomorrow, I'll be starting a YouTube channel. I will be talking about this. It's more of like something that you will be discovering yourself in the continuous journey of always creating videos. Because in the first year of me creating videos, I thought I was going to be talking about self-development. I was following Marie Forleo and all these people who are doing self-development stuff. And I was also doing the self-development psychology thing within myself. And so I thought that I would be making videos about self-development. I tried it. If you're going to see my previous or old videos, it was more of like how to not get so stiff of emotional criticisms and how to like ignore them, ignore the haters and like all these things. I have topics like that in my old, old videos. And the truth is it didn't work out because there's a lot of loopholes in personal development that I don't really like compared to marketing where it's a solid thing. This is it. One, two, three, four. There's a step-by-step -step process. I can outline it. It's much, much easier for me to say it compared to the personal development thing. So there's that. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to choosing a topic, something that you will be talking about for the next two to five years. It's something that you will discover yourself. So what I would advise is that when you are starting your very first video or your YouTube channel or whatever channel you're going to be recording videos to or uploading videos to, I would say that just try to speak your mind. What's important is that you identify firsthand if you're going to be entertaining, educating, or both. So which of those three are you going to be doing? Is it entertaining mainly? And so try to make videos that entertain. Do that over and over and over again. And there would be like topics that would stand out in your videos. And that's going to be your niche. Same thing with educating. You could just be talking about let's say MBTI or personal development or all these things, you start creating those videos and then you would realize, I don't really enjoy talking about this. I keep on rambling about this topic. This one, I really enjoy it. And that's something that you will realize in the journey of always creating videos. So don't try to like stiff yourself up with a specific topic and just force yourself to do that for the next two to five years. That's not how the videos go, okay? Second one is you have to tell stories. We humans are so much more than just touching, feeling, sensing human beings. We really like stories and it would increase the retention rate of your videos, which YouTube really loves, by the way. And so when you do that, you're not only building a connection with your audience, you're also helping YouTube algorithm be happy with your videos and it would just rank, right? So there's that, tell stories. Next one is document, do not try to create. So this this one, I don't really fully believe in this because when I'm creating these videos, I'm creating. I don't feel like I'm documenting. I'm never the type of person who likes to document because I feel restricted or I kind of like feel like someone has to keep on following me on film. No, not my thing. I have to be prepared to talk to you in these videos. And so if you follow this guideline by Gary Vaynerchuk, this would usually be really good when it comes to entertainment. And that's where vlogs come in, right? That's when they just keep on documenting the things that are happening in their lives 24 seven. And that's what they put out there as people of entertainment. And that's not me. So I wouldn't be really able to like document probably when there's something that's happening in my life that is exciting. Like for example, I'm planning to vlog the day that I'm going to move to the United States. So please watch out for that. But that's the only part of the things in my life that I would like to document, not my everyday thing. So if this applies to you, if you're planning to be creating videos wherein you're documenting instead of creating, then that would do really, really well also because then you don't need to think about what topics to talk about. Okay, there you have it. So that's the end of this video, you guys. It's a lot to unpack, but since this is going to be your very first step into creating videos, I hope that this has been helpful. And 
as always, awesome conversations happen in a Telegram community. If you don't know what Telegram is, it's an app, supercharged, awesome. I'm going to be linking the link to our Telegram community in the description. I hope you join us there to meet other people in the YouTube page or the Facebook page that has been following me for a while. Meet new friends, share awesome ideas, and of course, I'll see you again next Wednesday for a new video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!